Folks love it when you tell them that which is positive and encouraging. They don't like it so much when you teach them about what is to be restrained from or what the boundaries are. But even in the negative, there can be the positive. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Tour, day four of Bear Sheet. Let's go to Bear Sheet, Genesis chapter three. Verse one says, And the Nahash was more crafty than all the lives of the field, which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, Is it true that Elohim has said, Do not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said to the Nahash, We are to eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Do not eat of it, nor touch it, lest you die. Now we know the following says that uh, Nachash, the serpent, said to the woman, You're not going to die. Bah. So there is a, a mindset within the Hebraic Roots community where folks would prefer to be allowed to go their own way, do their own thing, venture into their own path, learn at their own pace, uh, be free of community restraints and obligations. And I understand it. Several, many perhaps, have come from situations where they were overly obligated, where they were worked hard. Their volunteer time and talents and abilities were overused. And uh, they're tired, and they would just love to be able to sit back and enjoy listening without obligation and without any constraints and just milk it down to what they're happy with, cast out the rest, and say, okay, I've improved, and that'll be enough. Again, we're talking about then the, the difference between what is beneficial for the individual or for the community. And so we again have Mer Americanized even the Hebraic roots of, um, venture that we might be on. And considering what leadership is, and again, we're talking this week about leadership and authority and how it's revealed in this particular Torah portion. Leadership, our dominion, authority, rule is demonstrated. Uh, by leading people or making vital choices in behalf of others. And among those choices is the choices concerning constraint. Where are the boundaries? Where are the, the places that we should not venture? And how do we refrain from getting in to those, to those sketchy areas? Uh, oftentimes we're talking about get out, getting down in the weeds. We don't want to get, be there. That's There's no fruit there in the weeds. So, and being a leader, and you might say, well, Barry, I'm not over a congregation. Uh, you know, my, my family doesn't worship with me. They don't follow this line. Who am I leading? You're leading yourself, and you, without understanding that you're doing so, you may be leading those who watch and listen and evaluate your walk and determine whether that's something that they want to emulate for themselves or not. And you never know when that's going to happen. Someone will approach you and, and begin to ask questions. If we have not led ourselves appropriately, then why would anyone else want to follow where we declare that we're going, whether we verbalize that or just keep it to ourselves? Consider this. The scripture says that the seed of the fruit is inside the fruit. And when we take that seed from the fruit and we plant it, we should get, then get replication of the same fruit. So if I plant an apple seed, I'm going to get apples, not oranges. The seed in the fruit determines the produce and the fruit, fruitfulness that I plant. But we don't just take the seed and chuck it out in the middle of a field somewhere and say, well, let's see what happens. No, we plant by design. Uh, my, my dad used to take me out into the, the little plot that we had, larger than most, I guess. And he would, uh, he would take a hoe or this 
plow thing that he had after he had tilled up the ground with the tiller. And he would cut a furrow in the ground and he'd say, all right, son, I want you to follow behind me. And I want you to take handfuls of fertilizer and I want you to just lay that out then in the bottom of the furrow. And then we would go back to the end of the rows and we say, okay, um, either he or I would distribute the seeds. And if it was corn, he said, you plant three or four peas, corn, kernels of corn here, go this far and plant three or four more and so on. And then the other one would go behind with a hoe and begin to cover it up. So my dad taught me how to plant in that fashion. This is the way you plant beans. This is the way you plant corn, etc. And it was by design. So when the crop came up and we were at the table eating the food that we had planted, it was, it was a rewarding feeling. But again, to scatter the seed means direction. It means a sense of precision to some degree. You had to plant appropriately in order to give the crop its best chance to produce something for you. Even after the, the plants come up, there is, in some varieties of plants, a need of cultivating and pruning. Um, you know, I've, I've learned in planting some tomato plants, you look for the little sucker uh, that, that appear between the branches and you want to pick those off because they're never really going to produce anything. They just take life from the plant. There's a little sense of pruning that goes on. That is alluding then to the idea of leadership. You can't just get up and wing it. Now, I've done that, unfortunately, a few times, and it's never really productive. You have a storehouse of things that you accumulate and understand, and you can share that, and that's one thing. But to say, ah, I'm not going to worry about studying this week. No, we're not going to prepare. I think I can just just go in there and just give them something. That wrong attitude. A leader has to stand up and declare what Yah is speaking. Uh, it's, it's, it's an obligation. It, there's a sense of weight and responsibility, accountability for that. But a leader also needs not only to understand what is to be said at this given moment, but where is this going? Once the people receive what is spoken, where are they going to go with it? How is it going to affect their lives? We've gathered here on Shabbat, and so we're talking about Bereshit, and we're digging into the serpent in the garden. And what do we derive from that, that on Wednesday of next week, that it has any sense of importance and direction to anyone who heard it on Shabbat? How is it life after the hearing. Now it is up to the individual. Or do they have a stony heart? Do they have it choked out with concerns of, of life? Is it full of weeds and no place for it to grow? I mean, what's going on here? Do you have a good soil? Well, that's the preparation of the hearer. But for me to be able to speak what needs to be spoken, it has to be good word. It also has to have a sense of vision and an understanding of where, where we're going with this. And once we get into a path and a, a direction, where is the boundaries? One of the issues that uh, military campaigns, especially during, like the American uh, Civil War, as it's referred to, uh, I've read uh, instances where it was hard sometimes to keep the soldiers on the particular path. They would like to venture off and, They'd see some fruit trees off in the distance or someone's field and they would run off or they'd just sit down beside the road because they were tired. Keeping people on the path and keeping them moving, hurting them, you might say, as a shepherd, is difficult work. But you have to describe the boundaries. Where is it appropriate to be and not to be, to go and not to go, to walk and not to walk? So vision means constraint, not just the glorious future uh, end result, but the path to describe that it actually get us there. Proverbs 29, 18, a very familiar scripture says that where there's no vision, the people are let loose. They cast off restraint, but blessed is he who guards the Torah. The Torah is the vision, and it is the path, and it describes the boundaries. 
Yes, Yah did say. And we'll see you again tomorrow. To then, shalom. 